Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and in this video, I'm going to compare two of the most popular microphones for voiceover and podcasting work the Rode NT USB and the Rode Podcaster, both of these hailing from the same highly regarded Australian microphone company, Rode. Both are USB microphones, which means you can connect them directly to a computer or laptop without the need for an audio interface or power supply. They'll even work on an iPad with the optional camera connector kit and a powered hub. Both also have headphone jacks for monitoring audio and are in a similar ballpark on price, but their physical and audio style, not to mention how you'll use them, is actually quite different. But first, why would you want to spend the best part of $200 on an external microphone when your laptop already has built-in microphones? Let's find out. Okay, so now I've switched the built-in internal microphones on my 13-inch MacBook Pro. And I think the difference in sound quality is quite dramatic. It's kind of fainter, it's thinner, it's also more echoey. The laptop microphones can't help but also record some of the ambient surroundings, the echoing around my room. Now, of course, I could improve that sound quality by getting closer to the uh, microphone on the laptop, but then that's gonna spoil the view if you're also filming a podcast, if you're doing it for video use as well. Although it does point out a very important thing when it does come to microphones. If you want decent sound quality from your microphones, whether they're built in or a super high-end external model, get as close as you can to it. I mean, obviously there are some minimum operating distances, but generally speaking, the closer you are to that microphone, the better the quality of the sound. And also consider your surroundings. Now I'm recording this in the quietest room in my house with all of the windows closed. And I've also closed the curtains because I want to minimize audio reflections from around the room. Now I do have some bare walls, but right in front of me behind the camera is a nice big thick velvet curtain. And that is doing a great job at absorbing some of those sounds. Now it's still a bit echoey in here, but it's not too bad. So remember those two rules when it comes to recording audio. Find as quiet a place to record as possible. And secondly, get as close to that microphone as you can. Now, I don't wanna hear this anymore, so let's move straight on to one of those nice Rode microphones and hear how that sounds in comparison. Okay, now it's time to compare the two proper microphones and I'm gonna start with the Rode NT-USB, which you can see again right in front of me here. Now the NT-USB is the microphone that I use to record most of my video podcasts that I do with Doug K. Although, as I'll mention later on, that's positioned slightly lower out of frame. I also use it to record the voiceovers for many of my product overviews, although if I'm recording those on the move, sometimes I use a Zoom H2N instead. But what I'm saying is that you're going to hear this microphone on an awful lot of the videos that you'll find on my YouTube channel. Now, it's a lower price product than the podcaster. It comes in at 169 US dollars or about 150 Great British pounds. And for that, you get the microphone. It also comes with a pop shield that I'm using here, a stand that allows you to mount it directly onto a tripod or this little handy mini tabletop stand that it also comes with. This means you can very easily deploy this microphone on a tabletop and start recording high quality audio without the need for some sort of studio setup. It also comes with a pouch, and because of its design, Rode actually recommends that you keep the microphone inside this pouch when it's not in use and pop a pack of silica gel in there while you're at it. Now this microphone is designed to be used from about six inches away, which is the position that I'm in right now. But because it's a very sensitive design, it can also be used at slightly longer distances. Uh, when I'm doing my podcast with Doug, I frequently lower it down just below the frame where it's about 12 inches away from my mouth. I angle it up to face me and it does a pretty good job at recording it. I'm sure the vocals become a little bit thinner than they are now, but I still think it provides a really good result. The NT-USB is a condenser microphone, which means it can capture a very wide range of frequencies. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which makes it ideal not just for recording the spoken voice, but also singing, musical instruments, or indeed any other sounds that you want to capture. And that sound is very, very neutral. It's very transparent. There's no, none of that kind of radio presenter style bassy type voice that you get some from some of the microphones such as the uh, Rode Podcaster as you'll hear in just a moment. Now the condenser design is also quite sensitive which again allows me to position this microphone out of frame with greater success than you could do with say the Podcaster which in most situations is going to be visible on the frame. Not a problem if you're only recording audio but if you're also recording video then you may or may not want to actually see that microphone in the frame. 
Now, the downside to condensers is that they are more susceptible to moisture and Rode does recommend that you use the supplied pop shield and that indeed you wipe it down after use and if possible, store it in the supplied pouch or any other pouch with some silica gel to absorb any moisture because that can cause a problem with condenser capsules. Now both of the microphones that I'm reviewing have got 3.5mm headphone jacks on the side, you can almost see it just here on the NT-USB and there's a volume control for that. The reason that you have the headphone jack on the microphone as opposed to monitoring it via the laptop is that it lets you actually hear the sound live without any latency direct from the microphone so if there's any problems you'll know about them straight away. But what makes the NT-USB different and to me more useful than the podcaster is that there's a second dial and this actually allows allows you to balance the mix of audio levels between the microphone and sounds that are actually coming from the computer itself. For example, if you're on a conference or a Skype call with somebody, then you can balance the volume of their voice with the volume of yours. Now that doesn't affect the actual recording volume, but it just affects the monitoring volume. It makes it much more comfortable when you're listening over those earphones or headphones. And I should also say that the dials are quite large, well built, and they, they feel really nice. Whereas on the podcaster, it's only got one dial and it feels a little bit smaller and plasticky to me. Now while this microphone doesn't feel quite as tough as that metal cylindrical shell of the podcaster, it is certainly very very well built. I've got absolutely no complaints with the build quality on this microphone. I think one of the bigger differences between this and the podcaster though is the way that you're going to mount it. Now the NT-USB can be adapted to a boom arm and adjusted in a studio type environment, but I think most people if they are going to go down that route will probably go for the podcaster because it's really designed for that kind of environment. The NT-USB feels very very comfortable when it's on a stand. I've got it on a small tripod here, but equally you could pop it on that supplied desktop stand or indeed any other tabletop tripod, pop it on a desk or a table and you're good to go. So even though you have to be a bit careful with that condenser design, to me it feels much more of a portable microphone. It's one that works very, very happily in your home or studio or office, but one that you could also confidently take on the road. Okay, now it's the turn of the Rode Podcaster, which you can see before me here. This is a microphone that is designed specifically for recording spoken vocals, voiceovers, podcasts. This microphone is designed for it, and it costs 229 US dollars or about 190 pounds. Now, in terms of physical style and audio design, this microphone is designed to mimic the classic radio presenter microphones that we're all familiar with, both their sound quality and also the way that they actually look in a studio environment. Now, the podcaster uses a dynamic design, which has a narrower frequency response than the NT-USB. It's actually 40 hertz to 14 kilohertz. And the dynamic design is also less sensitive, which means you need to position yourself closer to the microphone and speak into the end of it. Um, typically from a distance of about two to three inches works very well with this microphone and that closer proximity to the capsule coupled with its response and general sensitivity gives the sound a kind of fuller quality. It's not as accurate, it's not as transparent as the NT-USB but it sounds different. Again it's that classic radio presenter voice. After all, you know, you hear people talking about presenters having a great voice for radio. Well, that's not just the way they speak. It's the technology that they're using to capture it. And to really keep you in exactly the right position, Rhodes also got a small light here on top of the uh, microphone's uh, cylindrical body, which you can see best of all when you're in exactly the right position. If I go off slightly to the side, that light becomes dimmer again to the side. I can't see it so well below. I can't see it at all. If I position myself in exactly the right place, that light glows brightest of all. So it keeps you exactly where you need to be. Now, this microphone does come with a small adapter that allows you to mount it on a stand or a tripod, as I'm doing here. But really, it's designed, I think, to be used in a more permanent installation on uh, the end of an articulated boom arm, like an angle poise, ideally hanging from some kind of shock mount. This, of course, increases the overall price of this microphone. You're looking, if you're buying road zone accessories, to spending about $99 for that articulated arm and about another $40 for the shock mount. So that does bring up your overall price quite significantly. Although I did notice while researching this microphone that some companies like B&H, for example, 
can sell this microphone in bundles with third-party arms that work out cheaper. You could, in fact, put together a package with this, uh, this microphone and an arm for about $300. Now, one thing I will say, though, is the distance that you are from this microphone means that it is always going to be in shot when uh, you're filming video. Now, of course, if you're just recording audio, this is not an issue at all. But if you are going to be doing a video call or a kind of video podcast, you have to bear that in mind. Do you want this great big microphone in front of your presenter's face, which could be you? Now, there's pros and cons to it. I actually think it looks pretty cool, pretty professional. When I see people doing video podcasts and they have one of these big microphones, I know that they're taking this job very, very seriously. And I also know that the sound quality is going to be very good. So again, it's a personal preference. In terms of actual controls, there's nothing that's visible when you view the microphone in this direction, but on the underside, you will find a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a small dial to adjust the volume of that. Now, like the NT-USB, by plugging the headphone directly into the microphone, you eliminate any latency issues, which is great. You're hearing exactly what the microphone can hear, and that lets you diagnose any problems like too much echo or too much popping. However, the, the volume dial feels to me in some contrast to the overall build quality of the main microphone itself. I mean, this, this cylinder feels like an incredibly strong, almost like a lightsaber. It's, it's metal, it's tough, it feels very, very confident. It feels like you can throw it around and it will just shrug off any, any abuse in that regard. But then you've got this little plastic uh, volume dial that just feels really flimsy compared to those nicer dials on the NT-USB. Although equally, they couldn't exactly put a giant dial on the, on the side of this microphone and it would look ridiculous. So that's a bit of a compromise and a bit of a difference to be aware of. Now, you will notice that there is no pop shield on the outside of this microphone, and that's because it's actually built into the front of it. If you were to unscrew the end of this microphone, you'd see that there is a foam pop shield that surrounds the capsule. Although that said, you may want additional protection against those pops and plosives. I find that with this microphone, in its default configuration, it was actually quite susceptible to pops with my own voice. Again, your mileage may vary, but you can buy an additional foam shield to go over it. Or if you're mounting it again on some sort of bracket, you can have uh, an additional uh, pop shield in front of that if you prefer. Okay, so that's the Rode Podcaster. Now what I'm going to do is actually read a passage from a book, uh, the same passage with all three different microphone systems to compare how they sound. And then I'm going to wrap it up in my final verdict. Okay, for one final comparison, I'm going to read the same passage from a book with all three microphone systems. I'm starting, of course, you can't see the microphone here. I'm back to the built-in microphones for my laptop, which is about one meter away. Now all I need is a book to read out of. Wait a minute. This one looks like it'll do the trick. In Camera by Gordon Lane. Forward. Some people say you need to master manual mode to be a proper photographer. Some say you must shoot in RAW to be taken seriously. Some say you need a big camera to take great photos or you're just messing around. Me, I say nonsense to all of that and in this book I'll show you why. It's a fine read. Okay, now it's the turn of the Rode NT-USB. Some people say you need to master manual mode to be a proper photographer. Some say you must shoot in RAW to be taken seriously. Some say you need a big camera to take great photos or you're just messing around. Me? I say nonsense to all of that and in this book I'll show you why. And finally it's the turn of the road podcaster. So in my best radio presenter style voice, some people say you need to master manual mode to be a proper photographer. Some say you must shoot in raw to be taken seriously. Some say you need a big camera to take great photos or you're just messing around. Me? I say nonsense to all of that, and in this book, I'll show you why. So now I've switched back to the Rode NT-USB for my final verdict, and the question is, which microphone is going to be best for you? Now, if you're the kind of person who is mostly recording just spoken voice, you know, voiceovers, podcasts, that sort of thing, and you love that classic radio presenter style, then the podcaster is going to be the best microphone for you out of this pair. And if you've got it mounted on one of those boom arms, then you're going to feel like a studio pro. Even if it's in shop, it looks really, really cool. So if that's always been your fantasy, then the podcaster is the microphone to go for. Although do bear in mind that if you do want that boom arm and the anti-shock mount, you're going to have to budget at least $100 to $150 more for those accessories. 
Now, if you record a greater variety of audio sources, not just the spoken voice, but singing, musical instruments, sound effects, pretty much any kind of sound, then the greater frequency response, the greater accuracy and greater sensitivity of the NT-USB will serve you really well. And I should say that it is my preferred choice of the two microphones, even though I personally only use it for voice work. Sure, I miss out on that classic radio presenter style sound, but I personally prefer the way that my voice sounds on this microphone, but it is a personal preference. That said, there are a couple of other things that draw me more towards the NT-USB over the podcaster. The first is that to me, it feels more stable and easier to deploy on a tabletop stand or on a tripod in a fairly casual ad hoc environment because that, believe it or not, is the environment that I normally film in. I don't have a permanent studio, so I'm constantly setting up and packing away. So for me, the NT-USB feels much better uh, at coping with that kind of environment. And of course, it comes with all the accessories you need, including that little tabletop tripod stand. I also really like that second mixer dial on the side of the microphone. I find it really useful when I'm doing those podcast calls on Skype with Doug because I can monitor my own audio through the earphones and then adjust the balance so that Doug sounds absolutely perfect, which he does anyway because he's such a broadcasting professional. Uh, but the real clincher, at the end of the day, is also cheaper. It works out about $60 cheaper, or about £40 less. And remember, that's without any additional accessories. It's good to go, whereas with the podcaster, you're more likely to be spending at least another 100 bucks, $150 on a decent boom arm and shock mounting. So for all of these reasons, the Rode NT-USB is my personal choice, although you may, of course, prefer something different. And I should say that if I did have a permanent studio, I would find some way to incorporate the podcaster with that boom arm because it just works so well in that environment. Right, I'd love to hear which microphone you thought sounded better out of these two. And if there's also another microphone that you'd recommend instead, I know some people are very fond of uh, the Blue Yeti products. So tell me how you think that these Rode microphones compare to those and other options. As always, if you like this video, please give me a like, a share and a subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, it really does help this channel grow if you do subscribe. So thanks for your support there. And if you really, really like what I do, if I've saved you any money in making a purchase or on attending a workshop or buying a book or something, then you can treat me to a coffee uh, using the PayPal link in the comments below. And don't forget, if you are into your photography straight out of camera, do also try and look out for my book in camera. It's a fine read, honestly. Right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And of course, more importantly, thanks for listening. See you later. Bye-bye.